You don't have to talk, you know, James. It's well within your rights not to. You can keep quiet. Wait for your lawyer. It makes no difference to me. Does it bother you when I call you James? I know you're Jimmy, to your friends, to Mark, to Tobin and the rest of the boys. But you strike me as a James when things are serious. Hmm. I was the same when I was younger, your age. Sandy to everybody, even my parents. But the minute I put a toe out of line, I became Sandra. Still makes me flinch to hear my own name. Well, I was still at school. I'd taken a self-defence class with the other girls about how to stay safe, how to walk home at night, that sort of thing. And the woman who ran it, stern woman, cropped her hair and then whistled on a lanyard. She said, if you ever think you're being followed, ladies, do something strange or unexpected. Throws the attacker off, she says. Of course, this was 1980-something, so I can't be sure if that's any good advice at all. And so one night I was walking home after choir practice and I noticed this figure over my shoulder. Not big, but present. I sped up. He seemed to speed up. I slowed down. He seemed to slow down. I start getting nervous. My heart starts racing. I can hear that self-defence woman in my head and she's saying, throw the attacker off. Strange or unexpected. So I started to sing. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. Do you know Frankie Valley? Anyway, it started off soft because that's the way the song begins. But before long, I'm singing along with a brass part and heading right for the chorus. I'd almost forgotten about the figure behind me at this point. Caught up in the moment, and as the music reaches its peak, and then, from behind me, a beautiful voice. I love you, baby, and if it's quite all right, I need you, baby. I turned, and the figure was down on one knee, arms outstretched. Not all right, not among the ones he sang, though. It was my Don. First time we met, we were married two years later. Did I always want to be a dancer? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose I did, really. You must have been really good. Oh, not bad. <laughs> Do you miss it? You mean, why did I give it up? <laughs> well, there wasn't much work. Not for me, anyway. 
It's an overcrowded profession. The union's hopeless. And while chorus girls of a certain age don't come too high on the shopping list. <laughs> oh, and now there's a triple threat. Kids who can do everything. Sing, dance, play the trombone. <laughs> Who's a bit of old cow then? <laughs> no, but really, some of these kids today, they're incredible. Anyway, I was already phasing out. I started off a little business with a friend of mine, making jewellery. It started to take off. And so did my friend. But that's another story. Anyway, somebody said to me, why don't you start a class? And I thought, well, that's a good enough reason as any. Oh, and I do love teaching. It gives me such a buzz. You guys and Jeffrey, you're just great. I really look forward to our classes. Did you do any big shows? Yeah, a few. In the chorus. <laughs> oh, and I understood it a few times. Never went on, though. Nearly. But not quite. It's the morning you wake up and you realise... You've got no more expectations. And that's when you make the big decision. So I did. <laughs>